Hello! Today we'll run through how I build a FAQ accordion drop down item. As you can see from how long this video is, it's super easy. I'll also show you how we standardize certain Tailwind CSS elements so we don't have to type out the same long list of properties over and over and over and over and over and over. And uh, just a quick anecdote. I was working with a senior developer on a project a while back. This is a good few years back, maybe even four or five years back. We were on a time crunch, so he built the FAQ page, and this is how he did it. We were using Next.js in JavaScript at the time. And you can see the logic in this and how it works, but this is absolutely not the way to build an accordion drop-down item. It's not scalable at all. I'll show you how I do it in a much cleaner, scalable way. But before we jump into it, I just wanted to quickly show you the most recent project I've been working on. It's a really cool idea for those who love traveling and listening to the culture and history of the place when you're there, but don't like crowds or don't want to spend £50 on a tour guide. It's called Narrated Guide and it provides on-demand storytelling audio guides for a destination. We use AI to varying degrees, but with our own algorithm, which is how we keep the costs down and therefore the price down. And by using our own algorithm, we can preserve a high quality content. I'm not here to sell you the product, but if you want to know more about it, leave a comment below. I am here to show you the difference between having an accordion drop down item versus not. So you can see it here. I'm fighting to transform the FAQ list into this accordion format, so watch this space. Otherwise, it's a nice clean design and the actual travel content is really high quality as well. I have personally used a prototype version on holiday and I really liked it. So check it out. Alstead came alive in the 10th century as Basel blossomed into a bustling trade hub. All right, moving on. Let's start with our FAQ page where we'd most often see this accordion type drop down item. Do you remember how to add a new page in the Next.js app router? Yeah, so it's just a folder with the name as you would have it in your path name and then page.tsx. R-A-F-C-E. Don't forget to add use client at the top here because it'll be a client component. All right, if we go to our page now, we have this awkward looking page. Instinctively, we might want to go into our div straight away and add the class names max width 7xl, minimum height screen, mx auto, py16, etc. It's a waste of our time to type this chunky string over and over again, right? If that's what we have to do each time, how do we ensure that we're getting consistency across all of our pages and all of our components? So let's not do that. Let's turn on our component centric thinking and add a new folder called design system here. Design system, if you don't already know, is a collection of reusable components with clear standards. Put simply, it's components for design. You'd typically see different types of buttons here. So maybe primary buttons, secondary buttons, tertiary button designs, input fields, etc. I like to put the layout and formatting stuff here as well. So the body structure and the heading tags, if any. We want to set up our page div structure here. So let's call it formatting.tsx. Then we can export body as a named export because we want to be able to export multiple values from this file. We'll return what we want our div to look like. So max width 7xl, minimum height screen, mx auto, py20, px6. And up here, we need to add children from the React node in order to use it within our div. And now we can use it in our FAQ page. Voila. We can do the same for our H1 tag. So back in our formatting file, we can add a new named export called H1 with a capital H. And in our class name, we can add what we want all our H1 tags to look like. So I'd say PT10, PB12, text center, 
text 5XL and from large devices onwards text 6XL font semi bold tracking wide we can now use this in our FAQ page like this there you go I've prepared some Q&A data beforehand, so I've just copied that across. Just some funny Q&As. Now, if you've tried adding the Q&A in this FAQ page before, you may have experienced a situation where once you click on show the answer for one question, all of the answers will show for all of the questions. But we only want the answer for that one question that we clicked on. How do we do that? The answer is actually really simple. We just need to create a new component. In the non-app router, we would have added this in our components folder. But in light of this new app router, given that we will only use this particular component in our FAQ page, we can actually just add the component in our FAQ folder here. If you want this accordion style to be reused across other pages, then I'd suggest you put the file in the components folder and call it accordion.tsx. Now, our accordion component will receive props. So we need to add that in first. We expect to receive the question, which will be a string, and the answer, also a string. It will return first and foremost a button. The button will have the question on the left and a show hide option on the right. And then we'll display the answer underneath. Let's go back to our FAQ page and map our Q&A data so we can see what our accordion looks like so far. Remember to add the index number as the key in our top div here. Now we can add our accordion component where the question is the question of each data object and the answer is the answer of each data object. That's what it looks like so far. Not very exciting. Let's add some functionality to see that it actually works this way before we make it look pretty. So in our accordion page, we'll have a state of show QA and this will be a boolean state with the default value being false. Down here for the span, we can change the display text with conditional rendering. So if show QA is true, we want to see an upwards arrow. If false, we want to see a downwards arrow. As you can see, this is very easy to do with a MacBook. I don't know actually how it works with Windows. I imagine it's not any more difficult. Okay, now how do we toggle between true and false? In our button here, we'll add styling a bit later, but on click, we can just add a callback function to set show QA as whatever is opposite of its current state. And down here, only show the answer if show QA is true. All right, let's test it. Yay! I mean, I knew it was going to work, but it's still a nice feeling to see it working. Now, let's add in all the styling. In our top div here, still in our accordion file, we can say py4, px3, my6, max width 2xl, mx auto, border, rounded large, flex, flex call, gap of six. And then for the button, we want these two spans to be at the opposite ends of each other. So flex, flex row, item center, and justify between, and gap four. If it's justify between, so if it's pushing each span to the very end of this X axis, why do we need to add a gap of four? Because on a small screen, I'll show you. It's a bit claustrophobic. Don't worry about the error messages in the console. It's just a hangover. 
So yeah, that's why it's a gap of four. It doesn't have to be four, it can be two, it can be three. You just have to see how it looks. And then we probably want the font of the question to be slightly larger. So let's say text extra large. The arrows, maybe a lighter shade, gray 500 and text large. That works. If we check our mobile view now, the spacing is getting tight again. So gap four is best, I think. And we want the answer text to be large. Great. That looks pretty good already. We can maybe add a top border here to show a separation between a question and answer. Hmm, I'm not sure. What about having the question as font medium? That's better. Let's remove the top border now. Let's make this top and bottom padding a bit bigger. Okay, fingers off the keyboard, I'm calling it a day. This is how it looks. Simple, clean, functional, responsive. What more can you ask for? I'm going to show this to the team at Narrated Guide and have their FAQ section changed. Wish me luck. See you next time.